organizing when all this started? I don't remember. You just told me in the kitchen. But it, it, I know it was in September when we went there. Did. Let's see. Was it was it being that thirty or twenty nine? Mm -mm. It's nineteen thirty four. It's thirty four. Thirty four. Somewhere first of the year. Two men from Atlanta came down here to organize. But I can't remember their names. But we were among the first to join. I can remember what went on, but I don't remember dates. Well, tell me what went on. <laughs> well, we met, at City City Hall. Hall. we met at City Hall upstairs. And these men said they were going to buy a lot over here on the corner of Askew. But we never did have no deed to a lot. But they left here taking what money that they had collected. I wish I could tell you the name, but I can't. I don't know the names. Now tell me about joining up. Well, we all joined when the person well, started Well, they just asked us if we would like to join the union. And, uh, I mean the ones that were in the union, um, in the union, but now that everybody was not, the one approved by everybody, because our next door neighbors didn't even <laughs> approve it. Mr. Andrews watched, I mean Mr. McCur McCurry. McCurry watched the house and he reported to the office of the union to report, Mr. I mean, we called him Grandpa Johnson. He watched the house, and he told everybody we was having a union meeting. <clears throat> they never had a union meeting at our house. We had the meetings upstairs of the city, city hall. But they, these men weren't supposed to take in anybody except people that worked in the mill. But they threatened some of the merchants that if they didn't join, they was going to lose gonna their trade. Going to lose their trade. Leonie's father-in-law run a grocery store. They threatened him. He wasn't the father-in-law at that time, though I was not married. You told me just before, but it was exciting. You were a young girl. Oh, yeah. Tell me about that. Well, it was, it was just uh, when the group got together, just young people like to have fun, you know. Well, well we I didn't do anything other than even... just, you know, enjoy each other's company. Oh, we didn't I'm... have cars like we have today to go off on. Picnics and you guys being there by the shame together. Being a member of the union. When we come back from Atlanta, no, because I was fighting for something I believed in. If you belonged to the union back in them days, you'd get more raises. And you US Rubber had lots of mills up north. And if they hadn't, we wouldn't have got the raises we got in pay. Could you tell me how much you paid in dues and how long you paid to dues? I think it's about two fifty from them mm -hmm. two dollars. No, about two fifty or three dollars from membership, I'm not sure. Yeah, when we joined but a lot, not, of, a, lot not, a lot of money for us then. Not the ones not when we joined it was, yeah. but not every month. No, it's, uh, I don't remember about that we two paid dollars it every month. month. Yeah, we did too. They wasn't Somebody else paid mine, I didn't pay after it. After the, most of them left the union. Me and LaVar was still paying dues. But I said if they put those people out in a grain, I wasn't ever going to pay it no more. And I didn't. They did put them out. 
they tried to organize in Callaway Mills, and they put some people that joined it out on the street. That's when I quit paying you. But now those men didn't stay here long. They just come here. Got it started, elected officers. And one boy that was our secretary, they got him to quit the union. He got an office job. Harry Barton got an office job. I don't know what he Well, in other words, they were bribed. You can't. Who bribed them? Well, it's officers of the mm -hmm. mill company. Robbed him. You mean the ones that were working? Well, we yes, um, we worked for yeah. yes, rub officers of the overseers. I'm not sure we. Was you in the U.S. rubber? Sure, it's U.S. rubber. At one. that time, they took it March 18th. I mean, we moved back here March 18th. 31. Mm -hmm. But now they didn't organize, organize the union until 34. Now, had you heard anything about unions before then? Oh, yeah. Uh, tell us. We tell had us. heard our father speak of the union. Okay. Okay, could you tell me again about. Uh, how you first learned about the union? My papa reading the paper, mm -hmm. coal miners, and some of the rail workers, railroad workers, and some of them had organized, uh, not in the South that I know anything about, but a lot of them was organized up north. Pop read out whether you wanted to hear him a lot sometimes. How did your mother feel about this? My mother died at 50. Our mother wasn't living when, during that time, I mean. She was living in the coal mine. So the first time. Yeah. But my mother was not a she was not a politician. How <laughs> daddy was. Papa. And uh, back then I think mothers were more or less head of the children. That was their job, looking after the house and the children. The men did the politicking and Running right. the business. And yet there were a lot of girls, or women, in that, uh, in that uh, flying squadron that went over to Noonan. Why mm -hmm. was that? Well, that was for everybody. They we went down to pick early that morning. They were keep them from because there were workers in the, in the textile plant. And they, they didn't just they didn't organize the men, the they organized place. Everybody that we could organize. So we had that right. We went but down to uh, pick it. And we was down there when the truck comes from the Grange, Georgia. Did you have any weapons or anything in your hand? Oh, we might carry a stick or something once in a while. But I don't yeah, think we carried any weapons that anybody could have been hurt with. Could you say that again? I said we didn't carry any weapons that anybody could have been hurt with. We didn't take guns or knives or anything like that. Well, now, one thing I noticed when I watched the pictures is that you people seem to be so cooperative with the soldiers. You aren't fighting them or anything like that. Well, you know, they said, go. I don't need to. <laughs> uh, that was from the top. <laughs> but we didn't know where we were going either. Were you surprised? 
a little bit. <laughs> but we went close to the army camps. We was way on up where they kept their trucks and yeah. things like that. There wasn't no barbed wires. All that took effect after we got up there. Well, when yeah. you were picketing and then the soldiers came along, how was that explained to you? They just told us to get on that. They truck. wanted to arrest on they the wanted, marshal. They oh. wanted to show us they were just little old boys, <laughs> mostly. Well, young men. They had a spokesman along with them, though. I didn't see one. You was too busy talking. Somebody was driving the truck, of course. But the, them little old, that little old boy. Well, they were old with, enough to be in, you called them little old boys, but they the were old Guard. enough to be in the National they Guard. Was, they were they not were soldiers. really young, young boys. And we didn't see many soldiers while we were up there because we weren't near the soldier camp. We was up where they kept the trucks. There wasn't no, was nothing but a big old barn up there. And, but it was a wide open space or they couldn't have put all them men up behind the barbed wire. But all them posters were drug, dug and the barbed wire was strong after we got up there. But they slept on the ground the first night. And what did you sleep Army on? Army plane. Little old cot you couldn't turn over on. Just say. Just a soldier cot. Well, I'm, I'm sure you slept on what the soldiers usually sleep on. Because that's where they it got just it from. frame was a kind of a little bit like a hassle. How did you change clothes in that week? Well, we had a place screened off in there, but didn't have no pass room. They we did me some clothes. clothes up there. Oh. I guess it's in all of them. Mm -hmm. But now, they were from LaGrange, Hoganville. The sergeant. Sergeants. And I won't call up another place. But there's women there from sergeant. One of them was lots older than we were. But now we were not there but one day. I mean, we went that night. And the next day they brought that woman down there to be with us. What did she do? Who was this woman? She gave she us just orders gone. how to behave. Uh, like what? What were her orders? <laughs> some of them, somebody, some of them minded her like school children, some of them didn't. Some of them liked to talk to them guards. We well, they always they changed trouble. guards around the clock. I didn't you know, somebody in command, somebody that But now, as far as the soldiers, Captain Bell was the only man we saw. But he come out. There were some men come out there. Did you continue to talk to each other about the idea of a union while you were in the camp? Talked about a little everything. Had songs. Um, we entertained ourselves. Could you talk about the songs that you sang again? <laughs> I told you. Part of them was army songs, and part of them was just. You ever heard the song of Old Black Joe? Yeah, most. We didn't know. Well, that's we didn't a patriotic song. Sang Don't Fence Me In, Old Black Joe. I can't think of that other country song. And we sang a few religious songs. But we, that woman was nice to us. But you, she'd tell you what you could do and what you couldn't do. Do you remember her name? I wish I did. I told you, I just throw, if the rainwater's had that, why didn't you read it? Yeah, I mean, she might not have. Didn't you tell me the rainwaters? Did they have the. Still the, had that article? But they didn't have the name of the woman who would look after you. That's what I was yeah. fixing that. Wasn't it, I don't think so. I don't think, I, don't think I told you the other day either. Mm -hmm. But that woman come down next day. Yeah, that's right. 
Captain Bill talked to us mm -hmm. before they brought, before they took the trucks out. Mm -hmm. I think it's about three trucks, I mean four trucks in that barn, I called mm -hmm. it. And they closed up mm -hmm. that end of it and opened. Mm -hmm. Now, and when we had meals, we went out with our little canteens, went back inside to eat. But they they cook your meals out under the trees. We eat this way. You mean well, they I, didn't cook them in the mess tent? I mean in the... Well, they didn't have them. No, they cooked them quarters in the that open. Did. Cooked them in garbage cans. What did you eat? Well, they had beans, potatoes. I don't remember too much meat, but it was most vegetable. It's probably what this served the soldiers, as far as I know. But now we didn't see the soldiers. Captain Bell brought two officers out there one day. But now they didn't have anything to say to us. He just brought us out there to show, show us to him, I guess. Do you remember a lawyer coming out there to help you? He didn't talk to us. Because Captain Bell's, Captain Bell's wife taught school a few years and years after that, after my niece went to high school. There was a lawyer I named Joe it. Jacobs whom we talked with who said he went out there to try to do something about the situation. You don't recall it? Do you remember hmm? seeing one or hearing one? No lawyer talked to us, but Captain Bell talked to us the night we got there. And he said he's going to get us something to eat. Did he tell you why you were there? For what purpose? Sure. For breaking the law, he said. But we weren't trying. We were on someone else's premises. Mm. We was on the milk company. And actually, said, you were, were breaking the law, whether you were. And you didn't know whether you did it knowingly or. Well, I can see now where we were wrong, but we was doing what we was told to do. We went to Rock Mart, sergeants. And Yunnan, well, Danny. Now, what what was it like, right? You went over to the to those other mills, didn't you? I went. I believe it was twice. I went. It Rock may Mart. went every time the truck left. But Just, I I know I went over to them. Um, now we didn't go in the truck. We went in cars. Yeah, but I I went to. Sergeant, and I went to. You mean you didn't go to Rock Mart? I don't remember going to Rock Mart. I really don't. <laughs> they put <laughs> they go run us off with the hose pipes. I <laughs> got up on top of the bed, strung out the hose pipes. <laughs> but we went to Walt. Well, I certainly, certainly wasn't there. Some of them people tried to talk ugly to us. We just didn't pay no attention to them. How do you feel riding that truck? It was fun. Just we didn't go in the we truck. Were young people just enjoy whatever they do. Leon, we think. didn't go in the truck when we went oh, to Rockmark. We did go in Sergeant the, season. We did when we went over to Sergeant Eddie May. I didn't. I well, went. you might not have, but we went home. Homer Welch went out and bought a home. Welch drove a car, my dear. Well, he went. Um, he went out and bought a hoop of cheese. You remember? You don't remember hoop of cheese, I'm sure. But that's what he did. That's what we ate. He bought a hoop of cheese and a loaf of bread. That's what we had for lunch. How many of you were there? I don't even remember, but they were. Enough to go all the way around. There's at least, I imagine, in all, about 20, 25 people. I don't know whether it's that many or not, because it's just the ones that were supposed to. Had picked the next, I mean, the day before. 
We didn't pick it up. No. You were picked up two weeks into the strike, so you had two weeks to do this organizing. How many times mm -hmm. did you two go Two weeks. Out, didn't you? Have no, done. goodness, no. We've been we were someplace just about every day. But we was organizing more than in two weeks. Them men stayed down here about a week and a half. But we never did hear from them. Did you ever hear the term flying squadron? Not exactly. I have heard the term, but I, I don't think in the Army. Oh, it applied to the Union. I don't think I had heard it then. Oh. I ask it because that's a phrase you see in a lot of the newspapers yeah. of the time, mm -hmm. and I wonder. Yeah. But that wasn't, uh, wasn't a common phrase at that time. No, I don't think so. There's a lot of phrases that came out that have come out since that time. Mm -hmm. Could you describe to me step by step, you know, you get in the truck and then you go, you get out. Could you tell me how that works because I don't know. Nothing except we didn't know where we was going, but we found out when we got there. I mean, when you went to go to these different mills. Oh. Can you tell me that, how that worked? Well, we just all met down at the mill. Yeah. But now we did go in cars, most of us. We all said. So I know about three times we went, went in the truck. I don't remember whose truck it was, but they did use that truck uh, several times in May. I know there was not enough cars to transport everybody. I don't know why. Papa kept saying, I don't know. And then when you got to your destination, tell me about that. We just all got out. Yeah, we did That's have sticks. God warned them to come out under the sticks. If you ever see that picture, you see some of them had sticks. And what would you say when you got to the mill? We just wanted them to come out. To, to close the mill down. To close the mill. And a lot of them didn't want to do it. A lot well, of they them. didn't. None well, of them Many did. of them wanted to do it. None of them the come truth. out. We didn't get nobody out nowhere. But that's the rule that the men told us. So you'd never done this kind of work before? No. Mm -mm. It's more like a picnic than it was. But Roosevelt did encourage <laughs> everybody to I was organize. young enough then that I enjoyed everything. You mentioned Roosevelt. Roosevelt was out. He fought at Hoover. And what'd you get in the mail yesterday? A picture of Roosevelt signing Social Security into law in 36, wasn't it? I just told you, I didn't remember. That. Well, we signed up in 36, and we started Social Security in 37. Okay, I have one more thing now. It's him uh, and his son. I wonder if you'd tell us once again the story about the Zimmerman coming over from Germany. Well, you know, I'm kind of like the man who comes down here and get a job. Get a job. They ask him where he's born. He said, I don't know. Uh, now he told them where he was born. They said, well, when was he born? He said, well, I don't know because I was quite young at that time. <laughs> so, hey, you don't mean that speaker's on. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. I better yeah, watch what I'm saying. <laughs> Practically. What, t tell us about that story about the man coming from Germany. Well, I'll tell it like it's told to me because that was a long time ago. Said he's a 14-year-old boy and he was going to steal his way across the ocean. I know you left so oh, ready to break. Why don't you? But he was a doorway, but he got hungry and he trying to steal him something to eat. But the captain caught him 
He was going to make the little boy follow the ball of the rest of the way. I have no idea how close it was to America. But there's a farmer on the ship. He said, can I pay the boy's way? They told him yes. So he paid the boy's way over here, but he worked on the farm with him for seven years to pay his way over here. And I guess about, and I don't even know how many years, I mean generations later, my brother st struck up with a man going to Birmingham on the train. And he said he didn't know for sure, but he believed it was that boy's brother. Because he told a story about like, hmm. about like, I mean, told a story about his brother leaving hmm. home. Hmm. We do know there were two. There's two boys in the over. girl in the didn't band. know where they went. <laughs> that man lived to be 107. The <laughs> next one lived to be 104. And my granddad was 94. But now that farther back than that, that was my granddad's granddaddy. Or great granddaddy. Your, dad, your granddaddy was great granddaddy. Yeah. Now, and you people are going to be living until the, the next century? I oh. hope not. I might be dead tomorrow. <laughs> That's something we never know. I think you people are built to last. <laughs> I don't think I am. <laughs> did you, I just, you know, I'm not sure I know about where you work in the mill. And what you I worked did. in the spinning room. Yeah. I did too. So it's job in the no. mill. But if you ever got, if you ever went spinning, you couldn't go nowhere else. Go I on. didn't work as long as she did. I came out until 1940. And uh, I worked till I was 63. Um, I had a new job raising the family. But I went to work at East Newman, Georgia, at the age of 14. Supposed to be 14 and a half, but I got a card in that show that I was just 14. A lot of people didn't know there's labor law in their 20s, but I worked eight out. Eight hours in the mill until dark in the fields. My mother told me I started going to the mill when I was nine years old. Mom told me that one of them went and they go to work. You better wear your shoes all day. If you don't, I don't know if that. Meant. So I wore them all day. But when I come home at three o'clock, I throw them up on the front porch and went to the field. Okay, we're done. Okay, no, done. I'm just kidding. Okay. Okay. Sam's got a grand 